Hey, welcome once again to Moments. And um, my name is Robert Dickow, by the way. This is my dad, Gregory Dickow. And uh, we are hanging out with you tonight for Moments. And dad, it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time earlier to pray. I thought that was very powerful and very needed and very important. Uh, this is a very pivotal season for our nation. And um, I think it's amazing uh, just the perspective that you've, I just want to just give you a shout because you've really trained us to, no matter who is in leadership, uh, whether, whether it's someone we voted for or not, um, and you've taught us this for years, and it's amazing, amazing track record, because we've seen uh, presidents from different political parties, uh, and you've still had the same message that no matter who is president, we still serve a greater kingdom, and so we're gonna pray for yeah. our leaders no matter what, no matter who it is, no matter who we voted for, and so uh, I'm just so blessed to be in a place that celebrates um, faith, that celebrates prayer, and makes it a point that, hey, we're gonna vote, obviously we vote, we take action, but the first thing we do is we pray. So yeah. I appreciate you doing that, leading by example in that way. Thank and so, you. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm excited to, to talk because I think we got, um, we were talking a little bit beforehand about a few things to cover tonight. But obviously, not only was this week big because of the inauguration, but this week is, is really special because we're celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And um, so we we spent some time Sunday, you, you gave a quick word of encouragement around that. And then... Um, uh, we, we still want to continue that celebration. And yeah, so, I really do. Yeah. I, I want to continue that because, you know, 2020 really impacted my life yeah. in a lot of ways. I'm sure everybody, I hope everybody uh, really feels that way, that, that their lives improved. Although in the midst of tragedy, we, like we prayed, like we said, and like we've continued to encourage people to always look for the good, always find the good and look for the silver lining in any cloud, of course. But for me in 2020, it was like, um, I, I really began to, to understand things more clearly, uh, reprioritizing my life, reprioritizing the life of our church, simplifying what we do as a church, what we do as a ministry. Yeah. And I, things mattered more, things matter more to me now, I think. Uh, I think maybe for several years, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not the only one guilty of this, but I, when we come to a holiday like Martin Luther King Day, maybe in the past, I saw that as a day. Yeah. But now I see that as um, a lifestyle. Mm. Um, to me, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. represents something that was vastly underrepresented in our nation in the founding of it. And that was the, the sense of equality of all, of all of mankind. Even though we said that in our Declaration of Independence, uh, we didn't model that. Yeah. And so if I was to recreate, for example, like I hold Martin Luther King Jr. in such high regard because his influence transcended politics. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. his influence transcended nationality because his influence more than more than anything was an influence of love mm -hmm. and while he was the greatest civil rights leader that we've ever had in our country he was also one of the greatest models and examples of leading with love that anybody that i've ever studied in my life and that anybody that i know of like really I mean, I think of some of the quotes, because I want to talk about, yeah. I want to talk about how his dream, what made his dream so great, and I want to encourage people to, to grab a hold of, of dreaming in life. Yeah. And even though we're still going through a pandemic, we should, we should still dream big, and yeah. we should still have great dreams. God wants to give us dreams and visions, and I want to talk about what that means to have a great dream. But I think about some of the greatest quotes by Dr. King, and I want us all to learn from these things because he was a minister first. He was, and one of his greatest quotes was, anybody can be great because anybody can serve. Yeah, yeah. Anybody can be great because anybody can serve. And so I think that he modeled what it means to serve. Yeah. Uh, nobody, nobody served humanity like, like he did, people like Mother Teresa, people like Martin Luther King Jr., like they transcended race, they transcended color, they transcended, they transcended gender, they transcended 
um, nationality or upbringing. They transcended politics, yeah. which is one of the most important things that we would that we could learn yeah. as people is transcend politics and don't get caught up in one or the other, but instead get caught up in being seated with Christ in heavenly places and operating through the power of prayer and operating yeah, through the power of love. And um, so here's an example to me mm -hmm. of some of the love that came from Dr. King's heart and from the soul of a preacher, from the soul of a, a man of God, from the soul of a man, from the soul of, and even a, and really a young man, because mm -hmm. he was killed at the age of 39. Wow. He didn't even live wow. his 40th year, so and, wow. yet, and yet marked, made a mark in this yep. world yep. that no one will ever be able to erase. Right. And his mark, while it was incredible for civil rights, what was behind and what the motive of civil rights was, was love. Yeah. That God is love and he created all people to be equal mm -hmm. and to be, to, to be celebrated. And, um, and so this one really stuck out to me and then we can talk about it and yeah. talk about any of them that you want. But uh, he said, you know, a lot of people don't love themselves and they go through life with deep and haunting emotional conflicts. So the length of life means that you must love yourself. And you know what loving yourself also means? It means that you've got to accept yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I, up until today, I'd never even heard that quote from him. And it was all about loving self because not in a selfish way, but loving self in a healthy way, which is the only way we can truly fulfill the, the greatest commandment besides mm -hmm. believing in Jesus is to love our neighbor as ourself. Yeah. And you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself, if you don't have a healthy self acceptance you will not have a healthy acceptance of others, yeah. not a healthy without a healthy love. You won't have a healthy love for your neighbor. And yeah. so uh, to me, this is um, th this is what ministry is all about. It's all about love. This is what God is all yeah. about. He's all about love. This is what leadership is all about. It's all about leading people in love, leading people with love, leading people to love. And yeah. um, and really, like on Sunday, we kind of joked about the doors song because yeah. it had to do with my my title break on through to the other side and and the song that they did with that title. But today, I guess it would be um, all you need is love. Mm. We'd be celebrating mm. the Beatles today. We're <laughs> today we're going to talk about the Beatles song. All you need is love, because really that is all we yeah. truly and, need. And, and self love, I think, is so huge. I think you said this last week or the week before we were talking here and you, you basically said, uh, yeah, this is two weeks ago. You said something along the lines of like any hate towards others stems from a, a lack of self-love. Yeah. You, 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 the only reason that we have hate and, 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 and aggression and anger towards other people is because we haven't come to terms with the fact that we're, that we're loved. We haven't been able to love ourselves. And so that creates the tension, you know, with, other, with others. It really does. And so I think it's just so, it's, it's so counterintuitive, but it's the, this is the way, this is the it, method. Is it is. If you get self-love right, you're not fighting for it from other people. And so you're not looking uh, at other people to get something from them. And then when they don't give it to you, you're not turning and turning that into tension. And so it's just, it good, relieves, good it word. relieves all tension when you can really get this. And I think we, we, we brush past this a little too much, probably because of the stigma that it's a little bit selfish to think about it that way. And so it sounds selfish yeah, when you yeah, talk about loving yourself, yeah. but it's not, it's really, yeah, it's I got some hate really when I posted that, <laughs> I think you, you might've posted that for me, but I got, I actually got some hate yeah. about when I posted about all hate begins with self hate. Right. And right. you have to learn to love yourself like because Jesus loves us, because God loves us in our condition. We need to love ourselves in our condition. And some and I had some hate about, well, that's selfish mm -hmm. and you, you know, sure. you should hate your life. You should and of course there's scriptures that talk about that, but it's completely taken out well, of context. Yeah. And we need to really understand that that loving ourselves in a healthy way starts with knowing God's love for us. Yeah. That's that's so huge and um, I, we can keep talking about that forever. We could, we could drill down deep. There's, there's so much there, but even, I, I just do want to bring out one thing on that with the comments, because people, people are pretty hectic online and um, <laughs> yep. bring, you know, are very, very aggressive a lot of the times. And, but I think if we get this right, self-love, um, it's, it's a lot easier. When you realize that's kind of the, the root problem, that's where hate comes from, is people, that's, that's just somebody who really hasn't been able to love themselves 
And I think you can have a lot more empathy for people that spew hate um, because you understand, well, this is what they're really missing. And I think yeah, that, that creates empathy. Or if, we, if you can have empathy, that, that kind of brings the, the walls that we're, we tend to put up or the, the shield we tend to put up to try to, to, try to fight back. Um, That's really good. I think that falls away when we realize not only do we need to love ourselves, but when people bring hate at, towards us, it's not because they're hateful and it's not because we deserve it. It's because they haven't really tapped into this for themselves and really we can have empathy towards them it's for that. really good. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are, there, are, there are a lot of Christians who um, embrace the, the idea of hating your life because the Bible says if you lose your life for the sake of Jesus, you'll find it. And I think it's easy for some people to embrace that, but, but they embrace it in the wrong way. They embrace it as because they already don't like themselves. So a scripture like die to die to self sounds great because they already don't like themselves. And, and dying to self didn't mean to dislike yourself. Dying to self means to not live from a position of self-centeredness, but to live mm -hmm. from a position of Christ centeredness yeah. and a Christ centered is love centered yep. and love centered is is what spreads like we've been talking about it almost in, in a lighthearted way that if we if we learned anything from covid, it's that things spread. Yeah. And what we need to take from that is whatever we have, whatever we got mm. is what we're going to spread. So and so when we got love, it'll spread. If we got love, it's going to spread. Mm. If if something else is spreading, it's because of what we got and we got to change what we got to love. And I think um, it leads to one of the other things yeah. that um, that really stuck out to me uh, in 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 some of what Martin Luther King Jr. represented. And he said, we shall match your capacity to inflict suffering by our by our capacity to endure suffering. See, this mm -hmm. is why, mm -hmm. like, no matter no matter who you are, you should be able to relate to this, yeah. because from sometimes politically, you might be the one suffering or you might be the one inflicting the suffering. You got it. We got to drop all that stuff and realize that sometimes we're not always on the side of sometimes life comes against us mm -hmm. and sometimes people come against us mm -hmm. and sometimes there is and a lot of times there is injustice that's done. Yeah, absolutely. But his attitude towards injustice was not violence. His attitude towards injustice was not revenge. Listen to what he says about having injustice done, because we all have had injustice done to us and we all will have mm -hmm. injustices done to us. We may be the ones who inflict injustice uh, on somebody else, hopefully not because we intended to. Yeah. But um, if even if by accident or by the sheer fact that we're humans and we make mistakes sometimes. But when he said we shall match your capacity to inflict suffering by our capacity to endure suffering. Yeah. We will meet your physical force with soul force. Mm. We will meet your physical source with soul force. Do to us what you will, and we shall continue to love you. Wow. You know, wow. do to us what you will, and we shall continue to love you. I don't see that happen in, mm -hmm. in politics. Mm -hmm. I don't see Democrats having that for Republicans or Republicans having that for Democrats. I don't see that's why you can't find it there. You have to. We are the source of that. Political divisions will never be political positions will never be the source of of unity yeah. and will never be the source of love. Yeah. But the soul force, he talks about the soul force. He said, we will meet your physical force with soul force. Do to us what you will and we shall continue to love you. I don't know who that doesn't apply to. Yeah. This yeah. is how everybody should live. Do to us what you will, but we shall continue to love you. Like that is how to live that. This is what permeated this man's life. Right, and that's right. why it's not enough to have Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh -huh. We need to model his leadership. Yep. And we need to say that man was a prophet. That man was sent from God. His message was Christ's message. And some people may look at it and say, no, that was just civil rights. But no, it was love. Mm. That's the foundation of all rights. Yeah. yeah, love is the foundation of all. And so 
boy, I really want to appeal to everybody that we've got to recognize that um, that our country or whatever country you're watching from, whatever country you live in is not the answer. The gospel is the answer. Love is the answer Mm -hmm. and love. Everybody knows love in any language. Everybody knows love. You could you could take the word love in English anywhere in the world and everybody knows what you mean. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the word. Why? Because there's no word more likable, more lovable, more powerful than love. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I I think this is so cool. And, you know, I think many who some who may be watching and, and kind of uh, maybe wondering why, why are we talking about this? Like I thought we were doing a Bible study, but but I think the great thing about I think what what we believe and what we do is that it's we we don't just believe in just teaching the Bible. We we believe in 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 learning from people who reflect the Bible the most. And I right. think this is such a great example of that because some some of the greatest lessons that we can learn about Jesus, some of the great greatest examples of Jesus come through other people. Um, and clearly he was one of them. And so I love kind of just going through this and having a, getting to have a picture of what somebody other than Jesus looks like on this earth. I think, yeah. you know, I think that's really no, that's important really because powerful. this is what we, this is what we strive to do. We, we want to em- embody the, you know, the person of Jesus. So how we want to live our lives. And so sometimes it takes, you know, let's, let's get an example of people, of some people that have done that. And, and this man clearly did that. So, yeah, he's probably one of the greatest examples of, uh, of love when injustice was so yeah. uh, in, in that time, at that time in history, there was so much love that he operated in. In that time, today, it would be amazing if somebody was like that. Mm-hmm. But this was 50, 60 years ago. Like this was, this was yeah. in the worst, this was one of the worst seasons. That was one of the worst periods of inequality in America. Yeah. And it was ugly. It was an ugly time. And yet he brought beauty like I, I don't like I wish that we would approach things now today the way that he approached them in non-political ways, in ways that crossed all barriers and crossed all division, you know, broke down the walls of division and elevated the dignity of mankind. And like we've like we've said a lot that in our church, when people ask us, well, what do you believe about this particular sin? Or what do you believe about that particular sin? What do you believe about if this person commits this sin? And my answer has been, we exist not to condone lifestyle choices Mm -hmm. and not to condemn lifestyle choices, but rather to cultivate the worth of a life and to cultivate the worth in each human being. When we cultivate worth in people, when we truly help them to see how valuable they really are and how much worth they really have, then they will uh, they will flourish. They Mm -hmm. will begin to make, you know, some someone said I've I've quoted it, but I don't remember where I first heard it. But self-worth produces net worth. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you really understand your value as a human being, your dignity, who, who you are in Christ, you that that will translate into providing something for others that people will pay you for. Like yeah, yeah. self-worth produces net worth. You you if you truly understand who you are, it will result in whether you serve in a business or whether you serve as an employee somewhere or an employer, you, people will really see amazing results when they truly have self-worth that is not based on anything prideful or because of that individual, but rather because God made everybody yeah. to have self-worth yeah. because they were so, they were worth so much to him mm-hmm. that he died for, for us. Yeah. And we were worth so much to him that he died for us. And, and I don't think that um, we can ever go wrong when we when we call out and the dignity yeah. and the worth of the human soul. And, and also, you know, I, 
Uh, I, I know if you want to go somewhere else with this, we can, but I just do want to take a quick minute because as I'm thinking about self-worth, I kind of, I kind of would compare it to, um, to health, like physical health. It's not something that you just get and it clicks and you have it and you're good. It's something you do have to maintain, yeah. right? I mean, would you, would you agree? Yeah, you have to cultivate and you have to maintain it. And I think um, one, of the, one of the parts to that is you have to understand that I think the world that we live in, there are so many sources of... Um, or, or I guess just so many influences that tear down self-worth. Yeah. Think about social media alone, and I don't even want to get into it because it's frustrating, but I think social media is just such a negative influence towards self-worth if you let it. And so we have to be, I think, very active in how we protect, how we cultivate and protect our, our self-worth. I mean, I guess it's maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe more so like, you know, uh, like cultivating a garden or a plant or something like you have exactly. to obviously water it, but you also got to protect it from, you know, uh, what bad weather and yeah. from, you know, I don't know, from like poison. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm terrible with plants, no, but, but I know that you have to, I know you have to, you have to care for it in a way that you don't only feed it, but you protect it. And so I think, exactly. I think that's important with self-worth is we can't, we can't only just acknowledge and remind ourselves, yes, I'm, I'm valuable to God, but also really guard ourselves from the influences that yeah. would tell us otherwise or would make us think otherwise. Because, yeah, that's right, because the heart is the garden. Mm -hmm. Your heart is a yeah. garden. Yeah. And in the Old Testament, like the, God's creation of Adam and Eve was his first, he said God has had two creations, right? He created mankind the first time in Adam and Eve, and then he created, recreated mankind the second time in Christ. So Jesus is called the second Adam in the Bible. But the first Adam, the first time God created man, he put man in a garden. But the second time around, he did some he did one better. Mm. Instead of putting man in a garden to cultivate the garden, he put the garden in man. Yeah. And yeah. now we have in our heart, our heart is really the garden of our life. So whatever seeds we plant in that garden, whatever seeds we plant in the soil of our heart, the soil of our soul, that that is the kind of harvest that we're going to get. And so naturally, for those that are gardeners, for those that do understand uh, farming or planting or cultivating something, you do have to protect it from the elements. You do have to protect it from the wrong seeds being planted. You do have to you, we do need to guard our hearts with all diligence, the mm -hmm. Bible says. And I think a lot of people think that anything can just go through their minds and go through their their heads and it not right. leave a, a mark. And yet the enemy of our soul is constantly throwing seeds yeah. of darkness, seeds of self-hate, seeds of of anger, seeds of fear, seeds of violence, seeds of rejection, seeds of, of betrayal. The seeds are being sown continually in this world from the evil gardener, the devil, and we have to be smart enough as yeah. people and simple, understand life simple enough, as simple as what you would do to protect your tomato plants yep. from, from <laughs> you know, some insects or whatever could, right. could, could poison it. We have to protect our hearts from what can poison it. And the one thing that is the antidote for all poison is love. Mm -hmm. Love is the antidote. Love is the is the fertilizer of of our hearts that will constantly keep us growing healthy in life rather than unhealthy. Love cancels out fear. The Bible says it casts out fear. Yeah. Cancels out hate. So good. Right? Like Another quote by Dr. Okay. King, yeah. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden mm. to bear. Mm. I've decided to stick with love. Hate is too great of a burden to bear. Boy, hate will kill you. Hate will destroy you. Hate, hating somebody because of their politics, hating somebody because they don't agree with you, hating somebody because they're a different color than you, hating somebody because they're a different uh, gender or hating somebody because they they are figure they're 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 just evolving in their life and they're at a different place that, than you're at. Yeah. We have to give people space for grace. Mm. We mm. have to give people room to evolve. Yeah. Yeah. People evolve like history evolves. Mm -hmm. You know how both of both us and history evolve slowly. Yep. We Jeez. are slow. Yeah. We change slowly. We evolve slowly. We have to employ and deploy yeah. empathy yeah. towards others like we never have before.
Yeah, and I think it's also, uh, just as you're talking, I'm thinking about how we've kind of, as a, as a culture, become so comfortable with hate, and it almost, be, it almost seems like that's the norm. You're so used to seeing it, especially on Twitter and you know, on these on social media yeah. platforms. Like, uh, I, wow. I think it, we, we've become so comfortable. I think we have to, I mean, I'm, this is something I'm like, trying to do, is like, really, we need to, we need to become uncomfortable around hate. And we need to become yeah. uncomfortable with hate. And so when we're when we're in an environment that is fostering hate, we need to get out for our own sake. When we're the ones fostering hate, we need to stop. You know, I think when you're obviously, you know, when you're sitting on a couch or a chair, or whatever, you're uncomfortable. You're gonna make an adjustment yeah, because you, you know you need to be comfortable. You're, you're, you you can't just stick with discomfort for very long. And I think that's. I think that's how we need to look at hate is it's just not comfortable and we need to not be okay with the way that it is. So we need to speak up, say something, remove ourselves from the environment for our own health and then really control ourselves. And when, yeah. when that starts to come out, be aware of it and, and not, not be comfortable around it, not be comfortable in it. Cause I think that's sort of where we've, I mean, that's just feels like where we've sort of gone. Yeah, the Bible says, you know, anyone who hates their brother doesn't know God. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't care if you're religious, if you go to church, mm. you read your Bible. If you hate, you haven't met God. Like yeah. you might even be saved because your spirit is, you know, you accepted Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord, so you're born again. But you're full of hate. Anybody that hates somebody yeah. is, does, has not met God, does not know God is love. There's no, there is no room in God for hate. Yeah. There's no room in a church for hate. There should be no room in a family. There should be no room in a, in a nation, in a city, in a community. Um, speaking of hate, one of the other quotes is um, by Martin Luther King Jr. is really powerful. Hate is just as injurious to the hater as it is to the hated. Mm -hmm. Like an unchecked cancer, yeah. hate corrodes the personality and eats away its vital unity. Many of our inner conflicts are rooted in hate. This is why psychiatrists say, quote, love or perish. Hmm. Hate is too great a burden to bear. This, like, keep in mind, this is a guy who died at 39 years old. Mm -hmm. And a man of love was hated so much that somebody killed him. And that maybe others even thought of killing him. And that to me is, is pure demonic. Mm. Uh, any, anybody that hates uh, the previous president that we had, anybody who hates the new president we just got, anybody that hates the president before that or any, like that, we think because we're political rivals in, in our nation sometimes that it's okay yeah. To hate the other side and it's not mm. ever mm. okay hate is never okay and calling out somebody else's hate is is you can only even begin to think about doing that when you really when everybody talks about you being a person of love if everybody doesn't talk about you being a person of love in your life then you shouldn't be trying to call mm -hmm. out others having hate when you haven't taken the log out of your own eye first. Yeah. And so I just want to encourage people that when we think, oh yeah, well, I'm, you know, that person hates and this person hates, you, we got to stop judging other people and we got to deal with ourselves to the point where anybody that comes in contact with us feels love. Yeah. yeah and if they don't, good. we're not an expert on hate mm. and we're not, we're, we're not qualified to talk about it mm. in somebody else's life until everybody's talking about the love yeah. in our life. Yeah, absolutely. Until absolutely. everybody's talking about love in your <laughs> life, you are not qualified to talk about hate in anybody else's life. Huge. Boy, if we could get a hold of that. Yeah, we everybody would drop their rocks, yep. so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, to take a little metaphor out of John chapter eight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I think maybe the only the only thing that we're allowed to hate is rival teams like the Packers who are playing yeah. Sunday. But wow. other than that, other than that, that's deep. Other than that, we're not going <laughs> to. There's some hate. deep no. hate there. No, no, all uh, good, all no, good, all love, all, all love. love. Except Brady's going to tear him up, but it's all good. So, so let's keep moving. You got more to, more to talk about. You want to dive Sorry, into? Sorry, Dave, <laughs> and some of you Packers fans. Um, yeah. Okay, I do want to. I mean, do, go go ahead with wherever you want to go, but I do want to. If 
I do want to talk a little bit about dreaming if we have time. I would too. I would I love we're, to. We're running low on time, but let's get to what you want to go and then we'll see where we end up. No, I think, um, well, and we can pick up about dreams next yeah, week as well sure. because I do want to talk more about that because yeah. Martin Luther King Jr.'s most well-known speech, I Have a Dream, I think many times we take things like that and we sort of interpret it for our own self-interest like okay he had a dream I got to have a dream I got to figure out my vision my dream what's the dream for my life and I believe God wants to give people dreams and God wants to fulfill your dreams uh, there's a scripture about that that I want to just quote well everybody knows that the scripture that most people know the verse that says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according yeah. to the power that works within us in the message Bible it says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can dream, our highest dreams, our most infinite Huge. dreams, he's able to do better than that. But I, I thought about it the other day when I thought about Dr. King and I thought, I thought, um, what is a big dream? When we encourage people to dream big, mm -hmm. you see a big dream to me is a dream that impacts others. A big dream to me is not how grandiose and how how great I could be one day. A big dream, a great, de a great dream is a dream that saves others, a dream that rescues others, yeah. a dream that heals others, a dream that changes others, that Jeez. impacts others. Yeah. That's a great dream. That's a big dream. Like, I get it. Mm. Some people have dreams about, I want to have my own business one day so I can be independently wealthy. And there's nothing bad about that at all. But yeah. I would encourage you to step up from that level of dreaming into a level of, I want to have a business, I'm going to be independently wealthy, but more importantly, I'm going to have something to give. Yeah. And, I'm, and I want my business to serve others, and I want to be able to employ other people, and I want to be able to, you know, be able to, at any moment, give something to somebody because I'll have an abundance of good things yeah. that I can yeah. give away, and I'm always on the giving side. Like, that's... Now mm, we're mm. thinking bigger. The world of the generous, right? Proverbs 11, yeah. 24 in the Message Bible, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. So I really believe that a big dream is a generous dream. A big dream is generous towards others. A big dream is all about impacting others. You know, somebody said, you can, anybody can have success. Success is one thing, mm -hmm. impact is another. Yeah. Just having success is just you having success. Having impact means now you, your success has, has impacted others and brought success into their lives. That is the mark that we want to leave in yeah. this world. Yeah, that's awesome. Where, where do you think that, where do you think we, we should start if we don't feel like we're, we have clarity on, on maybe, maybe some people do have a very clear dream that does benefit others, that it does serve others. But if if other, if some, some of us may be in, in a place where, you know, hey, we're just working our job nine to five, you know, and that, that's what's right in front of us. And we're also in the middle of a pandemic. So it's kind of hard to think outside of, you know, uh, this moment, this Good. month, this week. I think how do we start, uh, I guess, getting our minds to think on that level? And if we want to open up, the, you know, get out of the box and, and start thinking big, is where, do we, where do we start? Well, again, um, you know, in the spirit of, of Martin Luther King and this week in celebrating his life. And he's a he's the, he is to me a textbook of fulfilling a dream. Mm. In other words, the things he said, the things that he did resulted in his impact in the world to the point where 50, 60 years later, we're yeah. talking about yeah. him today. And we're not, we're not talking about him as a black man. We're talking about him as a man who mm. impacted lives. I mean, I celebrate that he was black, yeah, but I celebrate huge. more that he simply was a man who would not be denied what he, the vision that he saw. Mm -hmm. And so, but what did he say? He said, anybody can be great because anybody can serve. And so you got to connect the, I have a dream speech with the anybody can serve speech. Mm -hmm. So what I would encourage the first step for anybody everywhere is serve where you're at. Serve somebody. Become a servant-minded person. The greatest among you is the servant of all, Jesus said. Serve. Serve your family. Be the servant. Be thinking about what you can, how you yeah. can make their life better. Serve in your church. 
Like even though we're online primarily, even though we're having one service this coming Sunday, obviously people have heard our communion service uh, for this month is this Sunday at our 1030 service, but all of our services will be online. And but even in an online church community, mm -hmm. there are places people can serve. They can serve by praying for our ministry. They can serve by giving to towards it. They can serve by having a life group or by having a, um, a watch party. They can serve by sending the link on evangelism, sending the link, the salvation link on our website to somebody that they know isn't saved or yeah. might be open their heart to Jesus. Yeah. So the so the step that all of us can take is serving. Joseph was a dreamer in the Bible. But what did he do? What brought him to the fulfillment of his dream that God gave him everywhere he was? He was a servant mm -hmm. when he was with his family. Mm. He served his father when he was with his brothers. He served his brothers when he was in, in Potiphar's house. He served Potiphar when he was in the jail. <laughs> he served the, the people in the jail with him yeah. when he was and when he was taken out of jail. He served Pharaoh and by serving Pharaoh, he served the world bread that saved the world from starvation. Mm -hmm. What is the common thread of his life that caused him to see God's dream for his life come to pass? He served everywhere he went. Yeah. He yeah. served wherever you find yourself. Be a servant. Yeah. You find yourself at work, serve the other people around him. Well, what if you're the boss? You should be the boss servant. Yeah. You should be yep. the best at being a servant. You should be leading by serving, not leading by telling people what to do, mm. but lead through serving, which yeah. is what we see modeled perfectly by Jesus. Yeah. We see it modeled magnificently by Dr. King. We see it modeled magnificently by Mother Teresa, people like that. Nelson Mandela is another one. Like there are people that have marked their lives with service yeah. and we should be following that example and we should be truly humbled by the fact that there are those that have gone before us who are humans with their flaws, mm -hmm. with their imperfections, but they impacted the world because their love was demonstrated through their serving wherever they were at. Yeah, that's how God promoted promoted them. They serve wherever they're at. Awesome. Let's serve wherever we're at. So good. So good. That's very, very challenging, very encouraging. And, and it's exactly what I think we all need um, to be charged with in this season, especially. So uh, we're, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, I think we need to continue this next week because there's some really good it. stuff. I, I do want to talk more about dreaming. I want to talk about yeah, I'd love to. the right conditions to for success and how to dream in, in bad conditions and poor conditions. So I think oh, we got, to there's, there's a lot, a lot to, to dive into. But um, anything else you want to use close out on before we wrap up? Yeah, I, I want to close out with one of my favorite um, quotes from Dr. King, again, so biblical, so much love. And he said this, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Mm. Love is mm. the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. You know, in Romans chapter five, it says something very powerful that I think we overlook sometimes. It says in verse 10, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? In other words, when he says, while we were enemies, God loved us. While we were enemies, he reconciled us. He didn't save us when we became his friend. He saved us when we were his enemy. Mm -hmm. He didn't die for us while we were his friends. He died for us while we were his enemies. And that is there is no greater love than that. Mm -hmm. And that's the love of John 316. God so loved the world. That's the love that Christ died for the ungodly while we were still sinners. It says at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. We might sacrifice ourselves for our children. I would sacrifice myself for my children. But God sacrificed Jesus, sacrificed himself for people that were truly his enemy. He they didn't be, we didn't become his children until we got adopted mm -hmm. through yeah. accepting Jesus. 
We were his enemies. Yeah. Mankind shook their f- fist at God and God loved them mm-hmm. and God sent Jesus. And in the midst of darkness, pierced the darkness with love because love is the greatest light in the universe. So right now, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord, why would you want to spend one more minute without this God called love, without this love called God? God is love. Why would you want to spend one more moment of your life in fear? One more moment of your life, not knowing the goodness and the love of God. One more moment of your life without knowing Jesus, not religion. I used to be religious. I got saved and then I became kind of hardened by religious rituals and legalism and following all the rules and making sure everybody was holy and godly and never did anything wrong. Oh, that destroyed my life and devastated people's lives. And I wish I could get it all back. But you know what? I can do this one thing. I can love you now and I can tell you how much God loves you now. And I can invite you to walk in this love, to experience this love by accepting this greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind is the gift of Jesus. And why would he give us his himself? Because he believes in our worth. He sees your value. He sees your worth. And he's like, you know what? I'll give my life to have an opportunity to know you. Wow. Sometimes I think I know we get the better end of that deal every time. So would you pray with me? Could I pray with you to be saved, to be born again? Just pray this out loud, Heavenly Father. It's all you have to do. Just pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my savior and Lord. I believe Just say that I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. And do you know that Receiving Jesus Christ is that easy. He said, my yoke is easy. Guess what? What you just did is the easiest thing you could ever do. And it's the greatest thing you could ever do because it'll never, ever end. And you'll never be lost another day in your life. If you would like to know more about this savior we just prayed with. There's a link on the screen. It's a book called that I wrote called The Power of a New Life. and It'll take you through the next steps of this journey with God. And I really want to encourage you to get that. You can download it. It's absolutely free. Download it anywhere in the world. But as we close, I want to also say to everybody. Put down the hate. Put down the, the divisions, put down. The pointing of the finger from any side. When you point your finger out, there's three fingers pointed back at you. So just remember that and let's lay down our weapons against each other and let's take up our greatest weapon, the weapon of love. Let's take that up and let's love like we've never loved before this year. Let's be love. We're loved. Therefore, we can love ourselves. We're loved by God. Therefore, we can love ourselves and then we can love one another. And then we can together love this broken, lost world. I love you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this service today and this moments. And we'll see you Sunday. God bless.